I woke up feeling under the weather. And then my life took an unexpected turn as I was diagnosed with Ebola virus disease. As I lay in my bed in Liberia for the following nine days, getting sicker and weaker each day, I prayed that God would help me be faithful, even in my illness. And that was Dr. Kent Brantley, the American physician who contracted Ebola and has just been released from Emory University Hospital in Atlanta. Welcome to your Thursday lunch break, everyone. I'm Tanya Rivero. Both Dr. Brantley and Nancy Wrightball, the two Americans who are being treated for Ebola at Emory Hospital, have now been released. Doctors there say they are both healthy and pose no risk to others. So what is the Ebola recovery process like? And is there a chance of relapse? For analysis, we're joining now by public health expert Dr. Alexander Van Tulliken, a senior fellow at the Institute of International Humanitarian Affairs at Fordham University. Dr. Van Tulliken, thank you so much for being with us. We know Ebola is a virus, so what does it mean to be cured of Ebola? In the case of Ebola, that means that there will be no virus left in your system and that it can't come back. So we, we worry about relapse, we worry about carriers because of diseases like hepatitis and HIV, where you could be asymptomatic but contagious for long periods. With Ebola, it's not like that at all. But it's such a deadly disease. What is the recovery process like? Well, it's, it's what you call a multi-system disease. So it affects mostly the liver, but also the linings of your blood vessels and lots of other organs as well. So. It's, you get a very, very widespread inflammation in your body, and that takes quite a long time to recover. So it's really nice to see Ken Brantley looking so well and being able to give a press conference. But he's going to have he's going to have a few weeks of feeling, you know, he's he's got a way to go still. But it's so exciting that both of these Americans have been released. It's important for people to know they pose no risk to the public. Correct? It's what what I thought was so interesting at the end of that press conference. He actually hugs all the doctors and all the medical staff that have been looking after him, and that's that. That kind of, sim I mean, obviously they care about him, but as well as that, the symbolic gesture of saying this man is touchable is really, really important. In our minds, we think <laughs> Ebola must be very contagious, and it's anyway he's cl he's cleared. Right. But actually, it's it's really important to kind of show how uncontagious he is. And tell us a little bit about the experimental drug that both Dr. Brantley and Ms. Wrightball were treated with, ZMAP. Obviously, this shows a lot of promise. It, it's a really interesting drug because it, it is um, derived from the body's natural processes. So when you get an infection, you make proteins called antibodies and they attack the, they attack the infection. And what, um, what the company ZMAP have been able to do with this 3MB drug is make antibodies against Ebola and give them to patients. Now, is there a certain time during the disease when it's the most effective? In other words, do you need to take it right away? It's, it, I mean, because this is such a fatal disease and it progresses so rapidly, the sooner you can take in general, when you're ill, the sooner you can take a drug, the better, and, and this is no exception to that. And we see that in the trials done on done on primates. And, and you say there's a second experimental drug that there's has a there's promised? a Canadian company called Techmura, which have got a lot of uh, money from the Department of Defence. They their drug works in a different way. It's called it, it's an RNA interference drug, meaning it stops the virus replicating. Um, but there is good monkey data on that as well, although um, human trials have not have not been started yet. Now, what are the chances we can get these drugs to Africa, where they are so sorely needed? I mean, we know that the situation in Liberia is turning a little bit from a public health crisis to a safety crisis. Yeah. I, I mean, it's very distressing to see the footage coming out of Liberia of uh, the, the military cordons and curfews being enforced. I think probably worrying about drugs and vaccines in this epidemic is a bit of a red herring. I don't think they're going to be the things that solve this epidemic. This will be controlled by old-fashioned public health measures, so case, um, active case finding, finding people who are sick, um, contact tracing, so saying, who, who you've got Ebola, who have you been in touch with um, and finding those people and caring for them and isolating them well. That's the most important thing to do. Absolutely. And it's important for Americans to know there is no, there are no other cases of Ebola in the U.S. right now that we know of. That's right. This is not a virus that right. is going to cause an epidemic in the U.S., but we should still really worry about this epidemic in West Africa. It's a humanitarian crisis, but it also shows how bad we are at controlling the spread of other viruses, which could cause us real problems here. Absolutely. Dr. Van Tulliken, thank you so much for that and being with us today. We appreciate it.